Hello, this is Mahesh Ravi. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a parallax website using Wix. So a parallax website is something like this, where uh, the background and the foreground of your design element, or maybe it could be an image, which moves in two different paces, right? which creates an illusion of 3D depth in your website. A very interesting uh, feature or design style that you can add to your website to create more traction and people who are coming to your website will find it very, very attractive. So for this um, exercise, we're going to use the CMS called Wix to create the Parallax website. So uh, I'm just going to come here uh, to Wix.com and once you have logged in, you can create a new site. So I'm going to click on create a new site. We can choose what sort of uh, website that we want, but this doesn't actually matter for the thing that we are going to do. So what we need to choose here is uh, click on choose a template. And we are going to click on blank templates and start from scratch. This is what we actually need to do. So once we are here in this um, workspace, you can see that there is a header there are some margins and there is a footer and this is your workspace. So for this particular parallax website that we're going to create, we don't need a header and a footer. So we need to actually remove that. So to remove this, we can go to menu and pages and we can see that we have a home page right here. We can click on this menu uh, button and go to settings. Once you're in settings, you can click layouts and you can choose no header and footer. So this will make sure that we don't have a header and footer to worry about in our design. It's going to be a seamless website. And you can see that the page height is slightly less. So you can just come here. You can click and drag your page height um, a little down so that we have some scrolling space to test our effect. Right? So we're coming here. We are dragging this way down. So we have some space here. So we're back here. Now we have our workspace set. We need the assets. Uh, to be prepped to bring into here and then do that so to make our assets ready for parallax animation I'm going to use Photoshop so this is going to be very easy if you're not very familiar with Photoshop you can just follow along it's it's a really really easy uh, workflow that I'm going to show you here so the first thing that I have to do is to find the assets that I want to use so I have already downloaded the assets that I want and uh, I put it in a folder so I have a background image like this and I have a PNG, a transparent image of a panda and I also have a transparent image of a mountain, right? So I'm going to combine all this together in Photoshop and stage the scene and then we will work on, um, we'll take it to um, Wix and we will continue the process there. So let's go into Photoshop. So once you're in Photoshop, you can open the asset that you want to work with so i'm going to open the background image first so go to assets and this is our background image i'm going to open it up so we right now have our background image here so we can see that in the layer palette that we have our background uh, image so and you can see that this is locked so if you click on on the lock icon it will be unlocked right now and you can double click on the name to rename it to the name that you like so I'm going to call it background mountain so we have one layer right now it's called background layer I just need to crop this a bit to uh, to my liking so I'm going to select the crop tool right here and I'm going to just make a crop selection so I don't want a lot of this uh, to be visible in my scene so I'm going to just come down. Yeah, I think this is fine. So this is all I want in my uh, display. So I'm going to select that. Now the next thing I want to bring in here is the foreground mountain, right? So we already have a transparent image of mountain. So one way you can bring a file here is to go here to file and place embedded. And you can select the file that you want to place and click place and it will be placed onto your document right so you can see that there are two layers right now the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to scale it up so i'll select this i will press ctrl t on my keyboard to bring up the scale uh, controllers and then i will just scale it by pulling the bottom and the corner uh, boxes the controls so i'm going to scale it like that i can move it and i can keep it where i want it in my scene 
Okay, this actually seems pretty okay. Right. So we have it right now. Uh, we can double click and we can change the name to foreground mountain. So we have two layers and uh, we can see that if you uh, you can see in the layers palette you can see that there is the eye icon which stands on the visibility of the layers so if you turn this off the layers are going to be turned off you will not be able to see them here so you can turn it on back and now um, the colors are very different here i want to actually change the foreground mountains color to something which matches the background so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the foreground mountain and go to image go to adjustments right and what there are a lot of image adjustments in here but what i really want to use in this scenario is the hue saturation because i want to change the hue of this mountain so i can select the hue slider and move it till i get the effect that i want so i think it this actually works pretty well so i'm going to keep it there and click ok now i need one more element to be here in the scene another way to bring an element into your scene is by going to your explorer window or your browser window and then you can take the file that you want to bring and drag and drop it directly into your document so it comes in like this you can scale it up and you can position it where you want it to be so i want to position it somewhere here i'm going to keep it leave it there and what i want is i can name the panda layer to panda i want it uh, him to be sort of behind the foreground and also you know um, it should be above the background layer so what I, what I need to do is go to the layer palette here and then drag and drop the panda layer in between the foreground mountain layer and the background mountain layer so we have this sort of so we can maybe move him a little to the side right so it looks pretty cool so we have it right now so uh, another thing that i can do is that i can add a text here in the title so i'm going to bring uh, a uh, title sequence. so for that i uh, can remove maybe turn off the first two layers so now i can see the background layer right and i can add a text layer so i'm going to go to the text click here and then maybe type um, panda there inside so this is text i want to use i can double click this to change the color so you can come here and change the color i can also change the typeface by changing these options here so i have one typeface and then i can change the scale by typing the number or just clicking and dragging this option right here right once you're ready with your text you can move it and place it where you want it right so now turn back our layers so we can just rearrange this and turn back our layers and we can see that this is what we have right now right we can see the panda bear uh, text is right there we can maybe move it a little to the top maybe perhaps okay so this is what we have now what i want to do is i want to actually create a uh, so right now if you see you can see that there is a foreground layer and a background layer so if you are really photographing the scene this will be in focus this will be in sharp focus and the background will be slightly blurred so we want to recreate that effect i'm going to select the background mountain layer and then go to filter go to blur and then apply a Gaussian blur in here. So we can see that there is a blur which is there in the background, right? And this now looks pretty cool. So I'm going to click OK. A blur is applied to the background and we have a text and a panda layer. We don't want this many layers right now. We just want to combine uh, the panda layer with the foreground mountain layer so that the panda and the foreground mountain layer is actually one layer. So to do that, it's pretty easy. You select both layers by holding shift on your keyboard and selecting the two layers so this will come like this and then if you go to layer and then click merge layers now that layer will be merged so the panda and the mountain will be in one layer so if you turn it off it's going to go like that the same thing i want to do with the text and the background mountain so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the background mountain layer click the panda bear inside text go to layer and merge layers so we have the panda bear inside and two layers right now let's rename this back to background mountain so we have the file ready right now what we want is we need to actually save this with these two layers as separate files right so what is the easiest way to do that we can just rename the layers with the file extension what we want to export this in 
Since we have transparency in this layers, let's export that as a PNG. So foreground mountain.png, rename that. And here also background mountain.png, just rename that like this, right? So we have done that. Now we can save this file. So we can call it panda PSD. So it's a PSD file, you're saving it. There's one more step that we need to do to create these as separate images. So we can go to file, we can go to generate and click on image assets. Once this is done, you can close Photoshop. So I'm going to quit Photoshop and it's going to go. Now, if you go to where you actually saved your PSD file, you can find a new folder which actually have the two layers separately. So this is a background layer and this is a foreground layer. This is what we want to take to our Wix uh, platform. So we're going to go back to Wix right now and we are going to add our assets. So click and go to images my image uploads click on that so here one thing that i would advise you to do is you can create a new folder here rather than uploading it to uh, one site so it's always a good idea to create a folder so to keep your assets separately so i'm going to create a uh, folder i'm going to call it the panda site right and inside that folder i can upload our assets so just go to upload media upload from computer you choose your assets. So if you go to row assets, we can see there are two assets in here. Select those two layers, click open, and that will be uploaded right into this folder. Two files are uploaded right now. Okay, we can see a preview here also. Let's close this right now. We just uploaded it. We have to close this right now. Okay, so now what are we going to do next to create a parallax is what we have to create a basic strip and we are going to add the background layer into that strip. So to do that, let's go to add, go to strip. And if you go to classic here, we can see very simple strips like basic colors and all that. So we're going to select a um, black strip right here. We can increase the strip size by holding on this and dragging it. So we have a bigger uh, slice right here so what we're going to do is we are going to change the strip background and uh, change it to an image so we're going to go to image we're going to go to our panda site image so we have two images we have the background mountain image we are going to change the background to that so the background is actually updated into the strip now we have to actually bring our image our foreground layer right so let's go here again go to image this time and then click on image uploads go to panda site and click on the foreground mountain click add to page we have that right now so the scale is not right but we have actually cropped it in the right way so you can just drag and fit it manually to the side and move it so that it fits the bottom of the uh, strip so we have the composition made so there is a, an image and the background right now so um, let's change the page background to something uh, which matches with this color so maybe maybe we can um, go to add color and uh, we can choose a color which sort of goes with the whole setting so oh, let's let's go with this color right now add so that is our background the page background right now we can add more content in here so let's say we're gonna go here we're gonna add a strip and uh, let's add an about a section so I'm gonna add this one so this comes right behind it and maybe another strip we can just go here and add another strip which is could be our um, services right so I'm just gonna add that so everything comes under that like this right so we have a couple of elements in here now uh, let's take a preview and see how it looks right so go to preview we can see the whole thing when you scroll down we can see all the content but there is no parallax effect here right that is what we were trying to do there is no parallax in here there's a small tweak that you need to do here to make it work as a parallax right so what we need to do is that we need to select the strip the first strip where we added the strip background so click on change strip background you can see that we have already applied it here click on settings right and down here you can see what is the behavior 
the strip should do when it's scrolling scroll effects and we need parallax so choose parallax now that is a parallax website right now right so that size is parallax right now and uh, what we need to do is we can just close this and we are good to go so let's click preview at loads and if you scroll down you can see that it's parallaxing the background is separate and when you scroll down the panda is actually going above it so the foreground moves separately right so this is how you can create a parallax website it's pretty interesting you can create a lot of amazing effects with it and uh, it's going to bring it's going to create a lot of interest for people who actually visit your website right so give it a try it's pretty simple to try out and uh, if you like this video please subscribe for more tutorials and uh, you can share the video as well i'll see you next week with a new tutorial until then bye